This financial markets update is for October the 8th, 2010. This right here is the weekly update. Markets finished up today, all indexes. Euro finished down slightly. Russell led the way, finishing up 1.4%. Second came the NASDAQ, finishing up 7 tenths of a percent. Today I'm going to show you guys the upgrades and downgrades, but I'm not going to read them because there were so many. As you can see, the only notable downgrades that I had with price changes were QLogic and Onyx Pharma. And the upgrades are just being overweight and it's been like that over the past month. So that's just another indicator to tell you what analysts are seeing in the markets. And when you look at the upgrades, I want you guys to piece these together. Because for an example, so you see Buckle being upgraded, then you see American Eagle and Abercrombie and Fitch. You can only take that and say, okay, so the retail sector is pretty much being upgraded. That's looking good. Now I'll go ahead and take a look at the ETF, see how that looks. Or I'll go ahead and look at some fundamentals, some news. Maybe they're uh, thinking that there's going to be a better holiday season and spending. Just take all that into account when you're looking at these upgrades. Also Verizon. We already know that the telecom sector has been on fire. Now we found out that they got an upgrade from 29 to 33 and I believe in January that they're going to be holding the iPhone. So that's really going to make this company pop. I can see it now. I think Verizon's going to be a thing of the future to own over uh, the first quarter of next year, maybe even going into the second quarter. And then you have Freeport McMoran. All the metals are going up today. Alcoa got a huge beat on their earnings last night. Aluminum prices were better than expected. And FCX finished the day up 4.5%, 4 points. It was a wonderful day trade along with the swing trade. If I'm going too fast for you guys, just pause this video and then you guys could go and look through all the upgrades yourself. Now we're looking at the one week performance. Um, if you guys haven't been watching my videos, most of you have. I said that the financials will finish in the top five this week and that participation of the financials could refuel a rally along with good job numbers. And the job numbers weren't that good. I don't, I, I'm sure you guys heard it all day from the talking heads on CNBC, but they came in worse than expected there were 94,000 jobs cut a lot of them being government jobs the census workers but I think one of the things that could have popped uh, the market was they were expecting 9.7 percent to be the unemployment range and it was actually stayed at 9.6 percent so it was a little mixed data. We sold off a little bit in the pre-market, but then the stocks rallied today, finishing up marginally higher. And it's really good to see financials participating. And then you had the grains. We had a great day in the grains today. But let me discuss this first before I get off subject. Conglomerates finished first on the week, followed by basic materials, industrial goods, and of course, financials. And then the lagging performers were technology, healthcare, utilities, and consumer goods. Now remember we had that big day early uh, a, couple, a few days ago, I believe it was Wednesday, and all the tech stocks were down. Well, they have recovered slowly, but that's a big reason why tech was the biggest lagger this week. But still, conglomerates finished up 4% and financials finished up about 2%. I mean, that's good in my book for a move higher as long as we hold the levels that I'm going to give you guys in the Sunday video this market could continue higher up to the all-time yearly high now taking a look at the grains corn and all the other grain commodities shot up today after the US Department of Agriculture report pointed to the highest supply and demand balance for corn in 14 years and as you can see we're looking at corn on the chart right here finishing up 30 points six percent the highest leader was in wheats and they finished up nine percent but we had some very modest gains today a lot of the big commodities being up over four percent and mosaic monsanto potash they all shot up today because of this 
and I'm gonna pull up Monsanto real quick on this chart just so I can show you guys I told you I believe it was on Monday they came out they said the roundup was causing birth defects um, they reported a decent quarter you know they missed a little bit but it was decent and all the bad news that was weighing on the stock with the GMO seeds and everything I said that people are buying large calls that's what I did my research on and I found out and it's just a coincidence that calls are being bought not only in Monsanto but in Mosaic and in other agriculture stocks it's like do, do these people know what's going on I mean someone has to have this information it's it's not just a coincidence that massive amounts of call blocks being bought on these you know ag stocks right before the US Department of Agriculture comes out and says that it's the best tight of supply and balance of 14 years I mean this is inside information and the people that are profiting off of this I'm not assume, I'm not gonna call anything out but it just seems like they have a, a close relationship with the people at these US departments and it doesn't seem like they make a lot of money pay the politicians off everyone remains quiet that's what it seems like to me taking a look at Apple here remember we had that decline everyone thought that this was the top but I want to show you guys something on this huge down day that we had with this hammer formation the next day was an up day was a green volume bar it doesn't show it with these candlesticks because they're Heikinoshi's that's what I use to determine the trends better but it was and whenever you have a decline in a very like well like stock that's only a buying opportunity for the people that were waiting for it to dip down to buy it and where else besides a 21 day moving average was a better place to buy Apple when it dipped down low to this 282 range now I'm looking at gold futures and I want to show some reconciliation about my point of view on the great commodity that is considered to be an inflation hedge and an alternative currency yesterday we had a decline on a nice amount of volume whenever you see fresh highs with lots of volume which we had leading up to the 4 a.m. peak that we had that produced this 1366 high there is going to be some people taking profits but we opened up today like I said the jobs number came out and gold gained almost 1% as the dollar weakened on the forecast monetary stimulus they're talking about printing more money so if that happens the dollar is going to keep going down and then QE is something else that other people have to worry about and that's just another reason that some people are buying gold to hedge against that and potential rises in consumer prices over the next few years I mean the, look the dollar goes down and what happens is it takes more dollars to buy things at the store aren't we noticing this now two years ago I could go in the store and buy a 12 pack of soda for 225 250 now I go in there and it's five dollars it's the same with everything look at cigarette prices I'm not a smoker but cigarettes are what three dollars a pack and everyone said if they go to five I'm not gonna smoke anymore nothing's changed only the dollars gone down therefore prices go up I mean watch the prices closely you could see this and watch the durable goods orders and everything else on the economic calendar when you combine all of this and put together a thesis gold is still strong and from a technical standpoint I told you guys that if gold held over 1335 and 1339 today I could only be bullish you know my thoughts could change in a blink of an eye if we hold below those two levels I will become short-term bearish but if we're looking at the volume we almost made back the entire down move that we produced yesterday I mean we got to close at 1347 yeah it's about 19 points down but still there was a lot of volume that stepped in today and smart people that have a long-term bias on gold are going to use every dip as a buying point 
All right, now I'm looking at the one hour time frame. This is the exact chart that I showed you guys last night when we were trading at this 1330 range. I told you guys my exact words were if we got above 1335 and then broke above our 1339 short term resistance, my thesis would change to bullish. All right, I am a day trader, short term swing trader. Nothing's long term. And what I can provide to you guys is levels on a turn of a dime. What I mean by that is I'm going to give you the critical level levels that I take my time out to produce and they really do work and if you've been watching my 40 videos that I put out you will see that. I became bullish when we held above 1339 so if I was trading this even for a swing trade I'd, I'd sit there and I'd say okay we got over 1339 right here now I'm back to a bullish standpoint. We presumed up and we got a close over the 50 period average today. That's only bullish. I'm telling you guys, it's bullish. Now what will happen next week if we get above 1351? I promise you, I promise you that this 1366 will be retested. And then it could break out, eventually get above the 1368 and presume higher. Now you see right here, all morning they couldn't get it above this 1335 level and people were thinking it was going to sell off. Then the massive volume came in right here. The bull stepped in, they said, uh-uh, we're not letting this go any more down than it is right now. They came out, they bought it up, and we closed at daily highs. So right now, short term bullish. And I'm going to use the 1339 and 1335 as my support as I did before. And if we seriously hold below 1335 on strong volume, then I will become short term bearish for a move that back down to 1306. Looking at the October contract for crude oil futures. And we edged up today. Earlier in the week on Thursday, we put in a high of 84.43, which was a five month high. Then we presumed up and we got to close right around our 80, I believe it's 82.74 resistance level. So now it's support since we're trading up over it. And we got to close back above the 50. So right now, if we hold above 82.74, I'm bullish on crude for a move back up to take out this 83.81 and then eventually the highs we put in on Thursday. Everyone was coming out yesterday saying, oh, the dollar hit a bottom, the dollar hit a bottom. Because it went up one day, you're saying the dollar hit a bottom? No, I don't look, that's not my focus right here. We have to combine fundamentals along with technicals in our trading. The dollar, I already showed you guys the levels. My exact words were if we could get a hold above 77.62, we could potentially presume up to break out of the downtrend in 78.81. That did not happen. We got a close below our 77.62 level. We still have a declining 50 on the one hour time frame. I'm only bearish on this. So our next level is going to be 77.35 and then of course a 77.15 low that we put in on Thursday. All right, now we're looking at the Dow Jones today. I pointed out the 11,000 psychological number in last night's video. We got to close at 11,006. So that's above at the psychological level. It's also above the May post flash crash high at 10,920. 11,258 is only one big, a couple big moves away. And that's the yearly high. And also, the NASDAQ and the S&P will have to catch up to it along with the Russell if that does occur. S&P looks like it's headed back up to the May high at 1173. If the Dow continues up, which is the outperformer out of the indexes, it could definitely lead up to it. And we're taking a look at the Russell, which is underperforming. The next level, as long as we stay above the June high, will be the May post flash crash high at 719.70. Russell looking pretty good, finishing up 1.4% today. And the NASDAQ, once again, the post-flash crash high, which was in May, is 24.34. We got to close at 24.01 today. Looks like the NASDAQ has a faster chance of approaching this May high than the S&P, but it could definitely happen. 
sometime next week. And I'm looking at the Sox here. If we get a move back up to this 356 and take it out, the NASDAQ is not going to be far behind it. May highs will be complete early next week. As long as all the news stays positive. Enjoy your weekend, guys. I'll put a couple videos out hopefully this weekend for you.